Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to Learning English with Lily. Thank you so much for taking the time to see the first video and for all your positive feedback. It's time for the first interview. So I thought I'd throw you straight in at the deep end. This is a great idiom, which means put you in a situation without a lot of preparation and start by interviewing a Scottish person. This is a real conversation between me and Billy, who is Scottish, and therefore it is a lot harder to understand. However, I have written a transcript for you guys, which you can download. If you just look at the video description, you will find a link. Before we begin, I'm just going to explain a little bit of vocabulary, not all of it, but just a few select words. To have a chip on your shoulder. So this is a great idiom, which means to hold a grudge. A guy who was quite skinny and small when he was younger. If someone says, oh, look at that picture of you, you used to be well skinny. And he gets a little bit aggressive, a little bit offended he could be said to have a chip on his shoulder. Hit the nail on the head. This means do or say something exactly right. Just think of having a nail and a hammer and you want to hammer that nail in so it goes straight into the wall. So you want to hit it right on the head. This pandemic has made us realize that we don't need to be going at 100 miles an hour all the time. Couldn't have said it better. You hit the nail on the head there. Okay, we have some adjectives, tight-fisted and stingy. These are synonyms and they mean that you don't like spending money. So imagine someone keeping their money tight in their fist. Ooh, almost time for the next round. Your turn, Lil. Oh, uh, forgot my wallet. You're so stingy. <laughs> Another adjective, Larry. Now, this is slang and it means you get a little bit excitable and loud and potentially aggressive when you're with your friends, especially if you've been drinking alcohol. Come on, England! Woo! Don't you just love English football hooligans? Final adjective, well-spoken. So this is someone who speaks politely and eloquently, often with a posh accent. If I'm meeting my boyfriend's parents for the first time, I might ramp it up a little bit and be more well-spoken than normal. Oh, hello, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. How delightful to meet you both. Um, I brought you a gift. I do hope you like it. Bumble along. Now, this is a phrasal verb, and it means to perform a task a bit clumsily or awkwardly. You don't necessarily know what you're doing or what your objective is. Yeah. Oh, it's a lovely walk. Oh, beautiful flowers, I found. Oh, oh. <coughs> I up my nose. Uh, ooh, oopsie. Uh, where am I off to? Can't remember. Never mind. Porridge. Now, this is a popular breakfast choice. You make it by heating oats with water or milk in a pan. If you're feeling really naughty, you can add some cream. Mm -mm, delicious. To busk. Now, this is a verb and it means to play music in the street and ask passers-by for money. Smelly cat, smelly cat, what are they feeding you? I'll tell you what, love, I'll give you a quid to shut up. Now, you'll notice that Billy's accent is very different to mine, and there are lots of different features, but I'll just mention one. It's the glottal stop. So this is where we stop the airflow in our throat instead of a T. So, for example, where I say Scottish with a T sound, he would say Scottish. You'll also hear talk of Wales. Not Wales the country, but Wales the animals humpback whales, blue whales, killer whales, they're pretty distinctive looking. Also, a few other marine animals are mentioned, whale sharks and sea lions. Welcome, Billy Dyer. Hello. My first interviewee. I am. That's because you live with me, you realise that. <laughs> so, Billy is from Scotland, specifically from the Highlands. Yeah. From a little village called... Adisig. Adisig. Currently, we're in Bristol, which is in the southwest of England, but Adisig is about 12 hours drive away. Drive, yeah. It's beautiful when the weather's nice. Which is not very which often. Is maybe more rare than Spain or France, but it's... Uh, 
Yeah, quite a lot more rare. <laughs> <laughs> okay, tell us about it. It's a small village, coastal village. It's a little enclosed bay. They have boats in the marina and uh, islands nearby. There's lots of wildlife, whales, dolphins, eagles, things like that. And then mountains immediately behind the coast. They have the steam train there that they felt where they filmed the Harry Potter movies. So a lot of tourists come there to... That's big. People yeah. love Harry Potter. Oh, they love it. They come in the summer and they're dressed as wizards and witches. And... <laughs> so this area of Scotland featured in how many Harry Potter films? Oh, I'm not sure. I've never seen them, but some anyway. You've never seen Harry Potter? Sorry, guys. What would you say are the main differences between Scottish and English people? I'd say maybe Scottish people are a bit more humble. I'd say Scottish people and Welsh people and Irish people have a kind of Celtic affinity. Basically it's, everyone apart from the English. Well, they're traditionally poorer and less well-educated and maybe they've got a little bit of a chip on their shoulder. So for English people, the Scottish stereotype is tight-fisted, stingy. Would you say that's not true then? I would say everybody I know from other countries who's been to Scotland usually find Scottish people very welcoming and generous. So what's the stereotype of an English person in Scotland? Come on, be honest. <laughs> they think they own the place. Well, a stereotypical British person is someone who's very polite and reserved. I think it's more of a Southern English thing, isn't it? Northern English people are... Which maybe, is closer to Scotland. Yeah, are a bit more like Scottish people, mm -hmm, I think. They're mm -hmm. A bit louder, a bit more a open. A bit leery, a bit more working class. A I bit think. leery, leery is a great word. For example, in the Scottish independence debate, I would think a lot of Yorkshire... Politics! Men, yeah, yeah, like Yorkshire and different and Cumbria, if given the chance, they might have wanted independence from, from London, from Westminster mm -hmm, as well, you know. Mm -hmm. There so maybe it's more of a class divide than a country divide. I think it is. You've hit the nail on the head. Good saying. I know. So I thought we would go through a few Scottish expressions for the okay. viewers because Billy says lots of things that I have picked up. What does I mean? I just means yes. It's just to agree then. Hi. <laughs> what about Ken? Ken means no. Okay, the verb so, no. Yeah. So would you be able to conjugate it? Would you be able to say she kens? Yeah, yeah. She kens it. You say, oh, the weather's lovely today. You say, I can. You say, I don't can. So you say, I don't know. I don't can. I don't can. What's the square root of a million? You say, I don't can. Do you not know the square root of a million? Hello. The next one, your mum says this a lot, and I love it because Billy's mum's actually Scottish, but she grew up in England, so she's got an English accent. She sounds quite a lot like me. She's quite well spoken. So she says, we for everything. We this, we that. So in England, we is urine the noun and the verb to urinate so if i say i'm going for a we it means i'm going to the to the loop we means what it means small so you say a wee you know a wee walk a wee chat a wee bit hill and glen from the famous song of flower of scotland the old flower of scotland when will we see your like again two of my favorites brand new and brawl brand new is usually used in referring to a person, a good person, or a fun person, you know. Yeah, I know Lily, she's brand new. And bra just means good. Somebody might make you a meal and you say, oh, that was bra. What about rocket and zoomer? A rocket is somebody that's a bit crazy, mm -hmm. a bit... A bit out there. A bit out there, yeah, a bit wild, but in a good way, or not necessarily in a bad way. Give me an example of where you would call someone a rocket. You know, Lily wants to make this video on YouTube. She's an absolute <laughs> rocket. <laughs> oh, thanks for the vote of confidence. Zoomer is more somebody that doesn't know what they're doing or doesn't know what's going on. You know, they'll just... They're just a bit unaware. Naive and, okay. and bumbling along through life. So am I more of a Zoomer or a... Rocket. Yeah, you're more of a rocket, I would think. Yeah. But sometimes I'm a zoomer. You lose your phone a lot. I don't lose my phone, I misplace it. I yeah. just I know it's somewhere in the house, I just don't know where exactly. Mm -hmm. Pieces. Pieces is a word a Scottish word for the food that you take to work. Okay. So your packed your lunch. lunch. Yeah, your, your packed, packed lunch. lunch. Mm -hmm. The word comes from back in the day, you know, in the shipyards when guys used to work and their mum would make them or the the wife or the mum would make porridge in the always morning. Always the women. Yeah, always the women. Not anymore. Traditional. Not anymore. <laughs> now I make you your make pieces. me my pieces. Yeah. <laughs> the mum or the wife of the family used to make 
pottage in the morning for all the boys, the sons and the dad would go out to work and then she would pour the spare pottage into the top drawer of the of the kitchen lined with paper and then for the next day she would cut that into pieces okay. and she would give them that to take with them for their lunch. Warm porridge for breakfast, solidified porridge for lunch. I mean that sounds absolutely disgusting. You gotta have a good piece. But I never ever give him cold porridge that has solidified in my kitchen no, drawer. I get, I get Gucci pieces. Mm -hmm. That he makes himself. <laughs> sometimes. You make me the Gucci pieces. Sometimes I do. You make such good pieces it brings a tear to my eye sometimes. <laughs> Stop it. Get the crack with someone. Crack spelled C-R-A-I-C. I think that's the Gaelic spelling. Gaelic is the language of the Gaels. They were the people who colonised the northwest of Scotland from, well, round about the time of the Roman Empire up until maybe the 1700s when the English drove them from their lands. And it just means fun or, or a good time. So it's a noun. If you're having good crack, you know, maybe you're having a sing song and playing music. Okay, so you're having fun. Uh, yeah, yeah, to get the crack can just mean to, to communicate with somebody, to meet them, see how they're doing. Catch share, up. Share stories, yeah, yeah. Three tomatoes are walking down the street. Papa tomato, mama tomato and baby tomato. Baby okay. tomato starts lagging behind. Papa tomato goes back and says, a bit high up, <laughs> squishes him. Says, catch up. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to talk about some of your passions. Mm -hmm. Music being one of them. I love the blues, I love funk, I love rock and roll, mm -hmm. I love hip hop. And you also play guitar? I do, yeah. I play guitar and harmonica. How long have you played guitar for? Since I was maybe 12. Many years. And you, I love just hearing you play guitar and sing because you just seem like you're in another world. Sometimes I like performing, but I like the performance to just happen naturally. You like spontaneous performance. Yeah. Tell us about the trip that you did to the States. Me and two friends, um, we hired a, a car and drove across America down through the south, through Nashville, Memphis and down to New Orleans. And we just played the blues every night and we played on the street and played in bars and just absorbed ourselves into the culture of the blues. It was, it was beautiful. Did you busk? Well, we didn't busk for money, but we played in the street. One time in particular in New Orleans, we gathered a big crowd. People were coming, bringing us beers. We were having fun. We were singing all having sorts Having great of, crack. Having great crack, yeah. The other passion I wanted to talk about was the sea. I mean, we've been to the sea loads of times together, and every time you seem to just be mesmerised by it, and then you just immediately dive in and swim. Yeah, I love the sea. I'm from the sea. I'm from a coastal community, you know, mm. so my dad always ran whale watching tours in Scotland and that's how I grew up on boats and since then I was able to capitalise on an opportunity where I bought a boat in Mexico and ran some holidays taking people to see whales and on the west coast of Mexico there's so much marine life they've excellent conservation in Mexico mm -hmm. and they have blue whales humpback whales all, all different species of whale killer whales you can see whale sharks and sea lion colonies and we can you can go there and get in the water with all these animals after that we sailed across the pacific ocean into the south pacific islands and went on an adventure and so you actually started a business whale watching yeah yeah i took on the business from a friend of mine who had bought the boat from we got to tonga where all the antarctic humpback whales migrate to tonga to rear their young are whales dangerous animals i mean they certainly could kill you by it, but it would always be by accident i think you know, they're huge, especially humpbacks. Humpbacks aren't the biggest whales, but they have very long flippers. Mm -hmm. And they often roll over and, you know, the flippers will just lazily slap the water. The flippers are maybe seven metres long. Wow. So if one of them comes over and hits you, you could get seriously hurt. You were so close to these whales. You were swimming with them. I mean, there are pictures of you touching the whales. But actually, the most the, the experience that most stuck with you was being under the water and hearing the whales. Yeah, hearing them is amazing. Describe that. Well, hump, humpback whales in particular sing very strongly. They can be heard from hundreds of miles away. And the, the sound travels in different bands. So if you can hold your breath or if you have diving equipment, in particular at night in Tonga, you can go down 10, 15 metres. Okay. And you can listen to all the whales and they're... They're singing and very sometimes deep rumbles that vibrate in your chest and sometimes high-pitched, beautiful sounds, but you're not really hearing it with your ears. 
because you're underwater it's just it, you're hearing it from your own lung cavity almost so it's quite it's almost a spiritual experience that sounds amazing thank you very much for taking the time to be interviewed you're very welcome <laughs> <laughs> Well, I hope you enjoyed the video, guys, and that you understood at least a little bit of what Billy said. Remember, you have the transcript to help you. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and remember to hit that bell so that you get a notification when new videos arrive. See you next week.